Welcome to EPSAP Technical Workshop Europe. We hope that you have been enjoying developing experience with us so far. In order to facilitate it, we'll gather up our technical team to give you some tips and tricks on how to use and integrate HMS core kits. But before we proceed to the technical topics, let me kindly give you an announcement about the contest schedule. So we've decided to extend our registration and submission period, which is now going to end on the 8th of October. The top 20 announcement shall happen from 9th of October to October 20, 21st. From October 22nd to the 5th of November, we shall be having a public review where your works will be exhibited on the contest website as well as app gallery. And in November, we shall be holding our final pitch battle. We're really looking forward to receive your entries and submissions and to see who will win in the category of most outstanding app, most outstanding game, most socially impactful app, most popular app, and to give some of our honorary mentions. And without further ado, let me introduce you to the first topic which is going to be HMS Core Overview. Here, you will learn about all existing HMS Core capabilities, main functions and tools for developers we have. Hello everyone, my name is Jihan, and today I will try to give you a brief about HMS Overview for HMS 5.0 version. I'm working as a senior software engineer and DTSC for more than 10 years in Huawei, located in Turkey R&D Center, where I'm supporting all the global HMS operations outside of China. So let's move on the slides. Today, I will give you a brief, as I said, about HMS 5.0. It is a part of, we are doing this as a part of App Innovation Contest Apps Up 2020. So we are uh, waiting for your participation in this contest to create some innovation and uh, make the ecosystem together. What HMS means is hey, Huawei Mobile Services. We are providing a wide variety of kits and services to make your app developments and innovation easy and uh, quickly. HMS Core is a toolkit uh, for your application and basically also for making innovation, uh, adding innovation to your application. So it is simple and easy to integrate. <clears throat> so what we promise to you is it is flexible so you can select based on your needs we have more than 30 uh, core kits and we have a bigger universe of services so you can select based on your needs and we are providing as i said rich capabilities uh, so it will uh, which it doesn't matter which category you are app your application is so we are providing all the services for all categories and it is fast to develop uh, as a developer based experience also i can say that and also from our feedback from our partners who have developed already hms kits i can say that three days for a kit per kit is approximate value of course it can change but it is sometimes for most of the kits it is less than this maybe one day for some kits it's just two hours or three hours of integration that's so easy to do and also the best part is free to register and free to use <clears throat> this is as you can see all these services and kits we're providing in the hms core 5.0 universe hms this version of hms core is i can say a newly released one so we have made uh, addings on these kits and gradually we are also developing more kits and we will release more of them. So basically, we can see that our app services basic. These are fundamentals for an application. You can see the push kits, map kit, in-app purchases for the monetization part, 
account kit for the login part and ads kit for also monetization part these are all the basic capabilities we have also ai parts for example ml kit you can have the ai capabilities in your application with a quick interface and also for media part we have camera kit image kit video kit and also we have the drm digital rights protection for device integration part we have cast plus kit we have health kits as well so it is important for health apps and fitness apps and for graphics part we have also also innovative and high technology kits it is it will give you the ar engine augmented reality and computer graphics kits and we also provide the security uh, like FIDO or, or safety detect you can have the uh, detection function with in just implementing this kit it will detect the device check it will uh, check the URLs it will check the user it will check the system for malicious and uh, threats uh, or other threats of the device and system apps uh, kits we have like nearby and also more to come we can wait uh, we will support you with more kits so up to date up to now we have uh, 81,000 applications already integrated HMS core so but more is coming because our ecosystem is growing and this is an opportunity to engage with this uh, ecosystem these are some stats from uh, for for three months of the beginning of this year so as you can see there is a huge growth in usage of the services for example ads kit you can see that it is a big step forward and all the kits are used widely which these kits are very important for uh, many applications because they are fundamentals so now i will try to give you an insight about some of the kits so let's look together some of the most exciting sdks that we're providing to you account kits first of all this is uh, important because we have uh, because with account kit you have a potential to engage with the huawei id users because every huawei device user has a huawei id uh, he or she must have it so with just one clicking you can make them login to your application with no email or other verification so it is a, i mean the accelerator to login to your application one of the important uh, innovative uh, part of our kit is ar kits a, a, a augmented reality engine so with using this engine you can accurately understand and track human bodies uh, motion and environment so also you can converge the virtual and physical environment together uh, for example you can have the body tracking function with body face hands or skeleton tracking you can track the motion uh, you can track for example the planes of the environment uh, you can also detect the motion and for environment part you can track the change of illumination uh, and you can track the image and environment features so these are not limited with that functionalities we have more in this engine and so after you detect the environment uh, you can draw virtual items on this environment so you can converge the real environment physical environment and the virtual environment in your application for example by using the camera and our ar engine continues to track capable to continue to track the device location and uh, it can make the perception of the real world with doing this uh, some are these are some typical applications in real world you can uh, have the ar games we are cooperating with unity for example you are you can also ar 
show, make a hair show and education part, you can use it. Also in the real life, you can add items, navigators for your navigation, or you can have the, this kind of application, like you can see the dress on a real model. And uh, to, for the development part, you only need the uh, Huawei AR engine server. Uh, you need to download it from App Gallery. This is an APK. So, but it depends on your device model. You can check the device list in our website under AR engine uh, section. So here, if your device uh, complies with the requirements, this should be Huawei device for now. So you can see this Huawei AR engine application on App Gallery. Otherwise, you cannot find after your search. So we also provide the video kit, which creates, I think this is a big also, uh, I, I mean, the industry. It hits to a big industry. So video is improving and growing uh, all the time and it will grow also. So here it can be on social media apps or it can be used in the short video apps and so on and so forth. What we provide is video playback right now and in future gradually we will also release live streaming and video editing functionalities. For now in video playback you can have video on demand, short video playback, uh, video hosting. Uh, features in your application and we are supporting all these categories and scenarios we plan to provide. This is not only for video kit, this strategy applies to all our HMS core kits. We also provide image kits which is also quite I think a big topic. Uh, Basically, we provide the render service and vision service. In the render service, you can create animations based on the image. We have default and ready to use animations, more than 20. Also, for image uh, post processing part, we have 24 color filters and uh, you can use with your application. And I will give you some examples about the render service. These are some advanced animations you can make uh, using this kit. This is particle view. As you can see, when you uh, touch your finger and move it, these particles are created and moving with your finger. This is water uh, wallpaper. So it's a good application of wallpaper, I think. Also, uh, it is interacting with your finger. And one more is about painting. So with your fingers, you will clear the layer up on your image. And this is vortex view. And this is the mesh image view. These are just five of the nine uh, out of nine advanced animations in total. So you can use this in your application. So for location kits also, I think uh, most of the applications using the location functionalities, especially rating, right hailing apps, social media apps or food delivery apps uh, are mostly depend on location services. So we developed this location service. Also, you can use it with map and site kit, uh, which uh, three of these are related to each other. So what you provide is positioning. So our uh, location uh, positioning is one of the best in the industry. It's 99% uh, we have the accuracy of the location. It's using the fused location. It combines the GPS, base station and Wi-Fi. Also, we have the geofence. So you can use this. Uh, with our client SDK. We also provide the map kits. So with our map service, you can have the map on your app. So you can also interact the map with, uh, for example, with markers. 
You can draw circles, polylines or polygons on the map. Also geographical uh, items will be seen, layers on the map. We also provide the routes, planning and navigation and we provide location search as well. So this is one good example about location and maps kit uh, integrated together with in one app. Comfortel Grow app is a top Singaporean taxi hailing app. Their problem was the, the driver cannot see the user uh, which side of the road he or she is waiting. So with using our super GPS technology under our location kit, so it can most for most of the case accurately locate the user if he waits this side of the other side of the uh, road because the comfort algo has the problem that in the hilly places this and the other location services uh, do not give the uh, precise uh, information about the location this was a good example of application so what we have also what we are providing is ml kit as you may know it's based on the ai and huawei also is one of the leaders in ai in the global area so investing and innovating a lot in this ai category so you can use this ai capabilities is a ready to use kit for your application so these are basic functionalities so you can call the interfaces uh, by just some few lines of code so for you can have the face detection you can have text recognition and you can have the image labeling as you can see here it is labeling the images in real time and object detection this is also real time and so you can have the different object types like plant like the furniture like uh, I mean flower or other objects one good example about ML kit is Banggood, which they have implemented the HMS ML kit. They are a global application uh, and they have uh, used the ML kit to detect the object. And so user can detect, uh, take any picture of a product, upload to the site, uh, upload to the application, and they can detect the product and then purchase it. So. 14 different categories of products uh, available for this application. So you can see a short video of this. Taking the picture. So that's it. For the growing service, I will talk about the push kit. So, you know, push kit notifications are among the most widely used HMS functions and we offer a cross-platform push service. And we are one of the best in the industry with the arrival rate of 99%. And you can create uh, the notification message, data message, subscription-based, a topic-based message, messages, and you can create by tag or you can schedule your push. We are providing also the rich formats. I will show you in the next slide. And we are supporting these three platforms for now and we will add more. These are some message styles that you can have. As you can see, button style, custom style and other styles you have here. And this is one example for uh, the developers. So you can see the FCM and HMS, if you have used before the FCM classes, you can see the comparison, how similar they are uh, and this one by one comparison. So all you need to do if you're familiar with this or you have used these functionalities in your app, you can just change uh, and just by doing this, you can switch to HMS a push kit service. So uh, the, what we are trying to do is uh, make your uh, integration easy because if you are familiar with the ecosystem functionalities right now you don't want to make a total different functionality and give a class and interfaces to you we want to make it easy for you to understand 
to make analysis and for the easy to develop. And also you can see this example. And this kind, this uh, comparison, I can say mostly same for also the other kids. Okay, also I will give you an uh, insight about analytics. I will try to give you. We have the HMS analytics kits, which you can integrate. Also, we can together use with the push service or ads or in a purchase service. So it will help you to collect analytics for uh, all your app. Uh, also for the other services of your app. So here what we provide is dashboard. We provide this kind of analysis. So you can have the audiences and you can create audiences and you can also send push notifications based on this audience as well. You can have the retention analysis, you can have real-time analysis as well, and you can make the debugging also real-time. And this is one other diagram showing the analytics kit. So you can use also for marketing uh, purposes. For monetization part, I will uh, let's look at in a purchase and ads kit. And in a purchase is also supported uh, more than 170 countries by us. It supports the credit cards. Uh, the major credit cards uh, payment services and also you can have the direct carrier billing you can have the Huawei points and also we are cooperating with local payment parties so you can have the currency conversion in our platform you can create the product and have the automatic currency conversion for other countries and other uh, rates and uh, what we provide is consumable services, non-consumable services, and subscription services. Uh, we're providing with in a purchase. Ads kits. This is also uh, if you are, don't monetize your application through subscription or in a purchase, probably you are using the ads kit. So also we are providing the ads kit capability to you for the advertisers and for developers also if you are a developer so you can have the ads from our platform or if you're an advertiser if you want to uh, make advertisement about your application so also you can use our advertiser platform you need to just you just need to integrate our eight kit in your application these are the ads formats that we're supporting for now. You can have the banner, as you can see, it's up, uh, it's a, it shows as a banner on your application. Rewarded ad, it's a video reward. Native ads, interstitial ads, and splash ads, which are shown to user before log, after login or uh, log out before log out. So now also I want to talk about App Gallery. Uh, till now I have talked about HMS core services. Uh, I have made a selection of services to describe to you. But now I want to talk about App Gallery Connect services, which is also important because uh, without App Gallery Connect services, just using the HMS core is very limited. And for most of the case, it is uh, it's, it will you have a lack of functionalities. So App Gallery Connect is our one-stop service platform for your, I mean the full life cycle of app, because you will use it for the debugging purpose. You will use it for the running purpose, testing purpose of your app. After test, you will use it for the release, uh, and you will use it after release so whole life cycle of your app is covered with using app gallery connect a cloud-based platform so what we have in app gallery we have release 
services like app bundle app release you can also have phase release and we have build services like auth service authentication cloud-based authentication service so with your authentication you can have let's say facebook or twitter login or you can have wechat login or you can have email login also and huawei id login as well and it is cloud-based and user information will be uh, located on our secure cloud we provide the cloud tv and cloud functions hosting and storage services which will help you for a serverless uh, environment so you can directly log in and start using this for growing services we have a b testing app linking and you can think like dynamic links and deep link we provide also the remote configuration and for quality part we provide performance uh, management monitoring cloud testing cloud debugging crash services and this is beta test you can have you can make the release for your beta version of your application and send uh, invitations to the users and for earn part you have this drm service and game and application kit integrations and you have these analytics services this is just an overview to make to show you uh, the categorized version of these apps uh, services so for development part you can use our sandbox for in-app purchase for example so you don't need to make a payment you can just sandbox uh, for the payment part cloud debugging we have the test applications uh, so we have the devices remotely located on a laboratory a variety of Huawei devices so you can connect and use it for test part we have integration check it makes and check automated check for your application before release and cloud testing you can have the automated test of uh, your app and we have the machine review and human review these are uh, the reviews by uh, during your release i mean and you can also have the phase release as i said before for analysis part we provide the crash so you can integrate this and see the crash report of your application it depends on the device the region and the type of the crash and all these services we provide for the life cycle of an application this is also important serverless part uh, I think for most of the for some of the applications it is really hard to implement the server and make the investment on that part so we provide these services on our cloud all you need to do is just log in and I mean register on our app gallery connect and log in to here and then start using these services cloud debugging as i mentioned before uh, but i want to give more details about so in our remote laboratories we have all, almost all the huawei device models waiting for you to test so you will just log into app gallery connect uh, enter cloud, cloud debugging section you upload your apk and then in the uh, simulator you will see the real device as this and you will start debugging and testing it so we also have hms core toolkit uh, what it is for i can say that it is to make uh, to help you to uh, make the integration with hms kits it can put the kit integration i mean the uh, api interfaces and it can convert your existing application gms code if you have some gms services already in your code it can automatically convert find this uh, apis and convert to the hms core api so basically it is uh, comparing it and uh, implementing for you if you are using gms services 
So two modes we're supporting at HMS API. So it will just make an addition as a another package. It will make the addition to your existing GMS functionalities or directly you can change to HMS. So it will convert and remove the GMS dependencies from your application. Quick app is also one new type of installation free application that Huawei is providing. Not only Huawei, some other vendors also providing this. Uh, Quick app is installation free application. So you can search the Quick app from App Gallery like a normal app or from uh, other, uh, I mean, the channels of Huawei. And you can click on it and without installation directly you can start using the application best part is it is uh, very quick because it is native uh, so it runs very quickly and also it's you save for your uh, of your storage on your device and the development is uh, with uh, javascript and G css you need to use and we have a quick app IDE, so you can download it from our developer.wavi.com website and start uh, developing it. Also, you can convert your HTML5 web page to the quick app application. So just open the quick app IDE and put your URL of HTML5 website, and then a few lines of code. Uh, I can say without a line of code uh, exactly, you can convert your application to a quick app and you can upload it to App Gallery. This is a fast solution also if you have a web page and uh, you need to upload. For cross-platform support, now we have, I can say this picture is the current status. We are supporting React Native, Cordova, as you can see Flutter, Unity, Focus. So these are the kits that we are supporting right now, but it will improve and it will grow uh, more. But it's we are here depend on your requirements. If you if you send your feedback and which kits you need to us us to develop about this cross cross platforms, we are collecting feedback actually from you developers. So we are waiting for your uh, feedback. You can open tickets on our developer uh, website from support page so let's look at the integration steps for your hms core five steps we can uh, we need to follow first you need to register with your developer account and you need to start creating an application on your ide you need to enable the services on app gallery connect so after your registration, after you're creating the application on our App Gallery Connect, then you need to enable the services. For example, if you will use the map service or in-app purchase, you need to enable these cloud services. After that, you will start integrating and writing code on your IDE three mandates per kit, let's say. And after that, you can release your application within three days of approval time and we are providing also code labs in our website so for almost all the kits we have code labs sometimes we have we have two code labs for example one is for java one is for kotlin so you can just uh, learn step by step how to integrate uh, the kits basically also for as I said, uh, we have a unified portal, developer.wavi.com. You can log in here, register and log in here and find all the documentation uh, about all the kits. And that's all for the HMS overview. Just now I want to talk about the uh, app uh, apps up contest. Uh, as you know, we have a total price of $1 million and as you can see, we have different categories. So uh, we, we, we are waiting for your, to, for your application and 
be a part of this growing ecosystem of HMS. So you can just type this website and uh, see all the rules and uh, every, every information about EPSAP contest. And that's all. Thank you for joining today to me. I've tried to uh, give a brief about HMS Core. So thank you for joining again. So much, Zehan, for the introduction. If you have got any questions, kindly leave them in the comments below. Or feel free to give us a note at epsubeu at huawei.com. Let us proceed to the second topic, which is going to be a live coding session. Hope you will enjoy it. We shall start with the ML kit. Hello and welcome to Huawei Developer Webinar. I'm Osan, Developer Technical Support Engineer at Huawei. Today, I'm here to introduce you Huawei Machine Learning Kit. The term artificial intelligence has been around for many years and today it's in our everyday lives. Artificial intelligence is the study of using computers to do works that need human intelligence and machine learning is a subset of AI. It's a set of techniques that gives computers the ability to learn from data without being explicitly programmed. ML learns from past experiences, improves its decision-making process and its prediction accuracy over time. ML is a way of creating AI. Machine learning needs training data to make decisions and predictions. To make more accurate decisions, ML needs better trained models and Huawei Machine Learning Kit stands out at this point. ML Kit provides developers a wide range of capabilities and developers can easily use ML Kit in their applications and create a better user experience. MLKit offers developers the potential to go beyond the human mind and build their own AI apps, even if they are not a machine learning expert. The services that MLKit provides to developers can be grouped under four main categories. These are text, language, image, and body-related services. With MLKit, you can recognize text in images and documents, recognize bank cards and other cards. You can detect speech automatically, detect its language, translate it and convert it to speech again. You can also completely convert an audio file into text file. You can classify elements in an image, detect and track objects, recognize landmarks, search for products in an image, and you can recognize faces and skeleton. Shortly, MLKit empowers your apps with the power of AI. You can get more information on developer.huawei.com. Today, we are going to build an example of object detection and tracking in Kotlin on Android Studio. We are going to detect objects in a camera stream, draw rectangles around the objects, and write their types. We are going to build our application step by step from scratch. So let's begin. Now open Android Studio, start a new Android Studio project, select Empty Activity, click Next. Set your application's name, I'll set it to Demo Tree and click Finish. Let's visit developer.huawei.com and in this website go to Console. If you are not registered as a Huawei developer yet, you can sign up from here. If you click console, you will see this page. Click App Gallery Connect and come to My Projects. Click My Projects. And add a new project. Name it Demo Tree. Click OK. Firstly, let's set our data storage location for our project. Click OK. Add an application to our project. We have already created a project on Android Studio, so I'm going to write its package name here. And set my application name as Demo Tree. 
I select the app category and select the default language and click OK. App Gallery Connect uh, guides us through some steps for integrating HMS into our application. Let's uh, download App Gallery Connect Services JSON file and copy this file here under App Directory. Okay. Let's get back to the guide again. Click Next. Now there are some steps uh, for our build Gradle file. We will add the Maven repository of Huawei into our build Gradle file, which is our project level build Gradle file. Go to repositories part and add this. Also add this under uh, all projects repositories. Take this class path part also and add it to our project. There is App Gallery Connect core uh, package here. We should add this uh, part package uh, into our app level build Gradle file under dependencies. And lastly, we need to add this plugin into our app level build Gradle file again. Make sure uh, pass, uh, to pass this under uh, com Android application plugin. Otherwise, it may malfunction. Click Sync now. On the other side, click Next and click Finish. Go to Manage APIs. Make sure that ML Kit is enabled. Then go to uh, the document, uh, click Develop HMS Core. Under AI, there is ML Kit and view the documents. We have successfully uh, added a HMS Core uh, into our application. Now we need to integrate uh, a mail kit into our application. For this, we visit the do documentation. Uh, Here is an explanation uh, to the services of ML Kit. Go to ML Kit, Android, App Development, Getting Started, Integrating HMS Core SDK. Under Adding Build Dependencies, let's find Object Detection and Tracking. Here we have two packages to add to our project. Copy them and paste them under our app level build gradle files dependencies. Later, copy these metadata tags here and add them to the Android manifest file. It is needed to automatically update our machine learning model. Click sync now. We need to create our ML object analyzer first. It is responsible for analyzing objects in the frames. Let's create our variable. Let's name it analyzer of type ML object analyzer. Let's create a method for creating our analyzer. and it will return ML object analyzer. Write ML object analyzer factory, get instance, get local object analyzer, and now we need to set the settings. Let's create the settings from ML object analyzer setting factory. Uh, let's set the analyzer type. It is ML object analyzer setting type video. Here we allow multiple results. It can detect up to eight objects at a frame. And we allow classification. 
and let's create it and pass it into our get local object analyzer method. Let's create our analyzer inside onCreate. Secondly, let's uh, go to activity main XML and create our layout. It will be very simple. We are going to use surface view and we are going to give it an ID. Set its layout width and height to match parent. And we don't need the rest, so we erase them. Just copy this surface view and paste it again below because we need two surface views one for uh, camera frames, and the other one uh, will be used as an overlay. We are going to draw some rectangles around the objects that we detect. Now let's prepare our surface holders and prepare their variables here. Surface holder camera, which says surface holder. and surface holder overlay. Let's create a method for this and name it init view. Inside it we can prepare our surface holder camera which is coming from surface view cameras holder and do the same thing for the overlay. Okay, we have initialized our surface holders. Our surface holder overlay needs to be transparent because we need we want to see what uh, our camera shows us. So select surface holder overlay and set its format to pixel format transparent. Later, let's add uh, a callback to our surface holder camera to know when it's ready. Let's create it here. Surface holder callback is and let's implement its members. There are three members surface created, changed, and destroyed. In this demo application, we won't uh, write anything inside the surface created and uh, it will shortly after uh, coming to surface created, it will trigger surface change it and inside this surface change it, we get width and height information and we are going to use them to build our lens engine. Firstly, let's use this init view here and create our lens engine variable here. Let's create a method for creating our lens engine here. We need height and width information which are of type integer and this method will return Lens engine. Call lens engine creator and it needs a context and ML analyzer. Let's pass our context here and we have already created our analyzer and let's move on. We should enable automatic focus. Set lens type, it can be either back or front. I choose back lens here. We should apply the FPS, I set it to 25. And apply dimension, here I pass height and width. If you want to support uh, landscape orientation, you should reverse this height and width 
uh, I'm going to use this in portrait orientation. So I use this uh, in this order, height and width, and pass create. Let's create our lens engine inside surface changed method. And we have this height and width information here. Now we can run our lens engine with the surface holder we get inside here. Okay, now we can create our transactor. Uh, transactor is responsible for drawing rectangles around objects because uh, the detected objects fall uh, under this class uh, transact result method. Let's create it and see. Create a class, name it object analyzer transactor. It should implement ML analyzer, ML transactor of ML object. Let's implement its members. There are two members of this. Transact result is the important part because uh, we can see the detected objects inside this method. Let's name a parameter as result to make it more meaningful. As you can see here, when we call result, we have an analyze list, which is sparse array of ML objects. We are going to use this to draw uh, our objects. And uh, inside this class, we need a canvas, and we are going to draw on this canvas, and we can get this canvas from our surface holder. Let's create a variable for this. It will be a surface holder, and I will give it a name as overlay. And let's create a setter for this. It's going to receive a surface holder. Okay, now we get we got our surface uh, holder, uh, and we are going to use it as an overlay. Let's create our object analyzer transactor class uh, inside main activity and set its overlay. Let's create a variable here and create our transactor inside on create and set our analyzer's transactor as the transactor we created and later go to surface changed and inside this set uh, the overlay. Call our transactor, set overlay, and we want to draw on surface holder overlay. Make sure it is not null and wrap it with a let call. When you no longer need uh, the lens engine, which is responsible for managing camera frames, you can release it. For example, for example you can release it inside surface destroy. Call release. Okay, let's get back to Object Analyzer Transactor. Here, we are going to draw rectangles around the objects that we detect. Let's create a method, draw. It will take in objects of sparse array of ML objects. And firstly, let's get our canvas from our overlay by calling lock canvas. If our canvas, and uh, let's set it nullable also because it's nullable here. Uh, let's check if our canvas is not null and our objects are not null. Then we can iterate through all and draw rectangles. Let's create a for loop here, object, in objects, uh, we can iterate through its value iterator and later 
uh, we can use paint class here to draw a rectangle let's draw a rectangle here called paint set its color I will set our rectangles color as yellow here let's set its style because I don't want to fill inside uh, this uh, rectangle and let's the let's set this stroke width and it will be 4 in this case let's call canvas draw rectangle to draw our rectangle so our rectangle is coming from ml object we can call object here which is an ml object here and border is our rectangle later we pass our paint also inside and let's uh, create our text here and draw it also because we want to write the type of the object also let's create another paint object here and set its color let's uh, write our text in, in blue for example and set its text size I will set it to 50 and then I can call canvas draw text but we need something here we need a string x and y points for position let's create these variables uh, because we get a type identity here for example let's create a type which is a string here uh, and get the type of the object from object type identity this is integer let's use this here and if it's ml object type plant then we can return type plant and control by control D on Windows I copy and paste it down below and quickly prepare others it can be a plant place other goods and furniture food or face just quickly copy and paste them to the corresponding places and let's add an else statement and write no match later let's uh, create our x and y points we can use our rectangle uh, here call our objects border take its left side add it to its right side and divide them by two do the same thing for the y point get the top and bottom now we are set we can pass our variables inside our draw text method write our type x point y point and the paint now we can post our canvas uh, to our overlay let's call our overlay here and call unlock uh, canvas and post the canvas we created every time when you want to draw on a canvas you need to clear it first let's clear it at the beginning of each cycle the canvas draw color zero and the other parameter is porter duff mode clear let's call our draw method here inside transact result call draw and we pass results analyze list inside later get back to main activity now we need to ask for 
permissions from the user let's add uh, them we need two permissions uh, write external storage and camera permission write external storage is needed for automatically updating the machine learning model so let's create a, a variable here uh, call it permissions and this will be an array of manifest permission camera and manifest permission write external storage and let's check if we have all the permissions or not with a method create a method here as permissions it will take permissions which is an array of string and returns a boolean by iterating through all permissions and checking if they are granted or not by calling context compat check self permission if they are equal to package manager permission granted then return true let's uh, collect all these four lines together and create a new method uh, for simplicity and call it init now we can use this okay let uh, let's check if we have the permissions or not as permissions if you have all permissions sorry i should write permissions all here now it's true if we have all the permissions then we can initialize otherwise we should ask for permissions by calling activity compat at request permission this permission list and request code is zero and let's check if the user has granted us the permissions or not by quickly checking if the request code is zero and the grant results uh, is not empty and if we have all the permissions granted call this permissions and then we can initialize okay when you no longer need uh, the analyzer, you can uh, call uh, stop and stop it. For example, in our on destroy method, you can call it analyzer stop and then it stops. Let's uh, check our application if it's working or not. For checking our application on a real device, I prepared Huawei Quick App IDE and here's a, a huawei p40 light and you can see it you can download huawei quick app id from huawei developer website go to develop developer tools and here you have quick app id okay our application is being installed okay it's working let's check I prepared some uh, objects here for testing and there are some oranges and uh, next to it there is a basketball and over there there is a plant and here there is an agenda okay uh, I hope that you enjoyed this session well uh, I wish you all happy coding and see you next time. Now let's move on to the integration of the map kit. Hope you guys will enjoy it. Let me give the floor to the next speaker. Hello everyone. My name is Jihan and today I will uh, make a live coding session for HMS map kit. We'll do together. Before starting, I want to show it for three slides as a brief what we will do today. Firstly, 
uh, I want to introduce to MapKit. MapKit uh, is a ready-to-use map for your application, so you can display maps for your users. It has also location functionality. You can provide geographical elements like roads, water systems, buildings, interests, and also you can draw markers, circle line, polygon on your map, and also you can have basic clustering. After that, you can have the interaction with user, with gestures and buttons. Uh, and we have the search for PI also in the nearby area. Uh, besides, you can have the route planning and navigation function. You will, you can have the location search function. So all of these are come with map kits uh, to your application uh, as ready to use. So today's session will consist of two parts. First is preparation part and coding part. In preparation part, first you need to have a developer account. So if you don't have please register on AppGallery Connect website. After that, after you log in on console, you, we will create the project together and we will also create Android Studio project and then we will bind them together and we will create the core, HMS core and map kits, the SDK configuration. After that, they, all, are, all of these finished, we will start coding. Uh, we will draw a map, add runtime permissions, enable location, we will add marker, marker and circle, and we will change the marker icon, and we will apply for basic clustering. Of course, we have more uh, advanced features, but today's program is not so long. Maybe another time we can make a, a second session for other, uh, I mean, the features. So thank you for joining. Uh, let's start coding part. This is the Huawei Map Kits live demo session. First, I want to show you the developer Huawei.com, our developer website. Here we have the information about all the kits. Let's move on Map Kit. We have documents and code lab. I will open both in the documentation part you can see the service introduction and app development part basically so we will go on android app development part and development process so we can here we can see the steps to start the integration and development firstly we need to configure app gallery connect we need to register as a developer to create the app, configure the fingerprints, enable map service. And then after that, here are the development and integration steps related with our uh, Android Studio. So I will start with create an app as I have the developer account already. In this page, we need to click on App Gallery Connects and need to click on my projects. Okay, here we need to create a new project on our account. It can be live demo two. Okay, in this page we need to configure the application information by clicking Add App. Okay, App Name. Okay, you can say, okay, we need to create a package name. Let's say, App and language. Okay. After finish this step, we have uh, some steps guided by our website. First, 
we need to download ag connect services json file let's download this and then we need to open android studio project and copy this file to our app root directory okay let's open a android project let's create together empty activity my application App application we can say and this package name should be the same that we have configured on the web so i will finish okay we have our projects and on project view we can open our app folder and then we need to copy this file to our projects as you can see yeah. okay this is our json file we need to open the and we can open our gradle to make gradle configuration next step is step two we need to configure project level and app level gradle files okay we need to put our maven repository under all projects and build script as you can see we need to copy our class paths about for app gallery connects under the dependency part for here and we need to switch to app level gradle and put the dependency for app gallery connects on here and we need to put this plugin bottom of the file we can put to here but please mind that this should come after Android application plugin. Otherwise, it will have problem probably. We can sync Gradle files. Okay, let's move on and let's finish. Okay, we have configured the basic things, but on also we need to make data storage Sorry. for uh, some uh, services like map not all the services but some services we need to set uh, data storage to use that services you can have the list of the required services in our website okay after making this one more step for App Gallery Connect, we need to consider this map kit should be enabled on Manage APIs page. Okay, after finishing all these steps, our configuration on for that part is finished. So now, now we can go to development process steps again and we can configure the HMS map sdk so here all these steps we have finished but we need to put our hms map kit dependency also this is app gradle file so let's open the same file and put dependency but we need to put the latest version latest version is this actually we can check it from the version change history also so i will change okay and i will make the synchronization these steps we have already done if if you have obfuscation then you can check this page and it shows you which lines to add and let's continue adding permissions so to use as you know in android to use that service we need to get permissions from user so we need to open our 
manifest file and need to put these permissions. These permissions uh, are, uh, I mean, ask to the user uh, while installing installation. And if you will use the location services features also during uh, with the map kits, also you need to put these two permission. Okay, these are installation permissions. And as you know, we also have the runtime permissions we need to get after Android 6.0. Need to get the runtime permissions from the user. I will also implement this part. Okay, I think we are done with the basic steps. After, I mean later before the build, I will configure the signature also. Okay, so we can start coding and we are in main activity. As you can see, and we need to first implement our own map ready callback from MapKit interface. And we need to implement our map ready method. Before starting the coding logic, we need to overwrite activity lifecycle methods. We need to overwrite these methods, but I don't want to make it one by one like this. So I will just copy it from our code lab. As you can see here in this step, we have already written here. I have just copied it as you can see. We need a map view. So I will create a map view object. This is also a Huawei map view. And I will also create a, a Huawei map object and variable. So this is the first step that we need to take. And second step, also before the logic, we need to get the permissions, runtime permissions. As you may know, after API level 23, uh, we need to ask for runtime permissions from the users as developers. This is mandatory by Google. We already have in the permissions in the manifest file, but these are uh, this will be happen I mean during the installation but also in runtime we need to ask for permissions so for a quick also implementation in here in our code lab you can see in this step also there is one method for this you can use this method so we can Quickly, maybe I will enter. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So, as you can see, this method will uh, check uh, the permissions for us. What this makes. I can show you. It is it compares the SDK of the I mean device with the SDK of the uh, this API. Wow, that was really insightful. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Now let me give the floor to the next speaker who will show us how to integrate HMS Toolkit in your app. Welcome. Hello guys, my name is Hayri Aral. I have started work as an assistant software engineer at Huawei eight months ago. From March to now, I taking role as a development technical support engineer. And my main duty is supporting Nordic countries to make their applications available on App Gallery. Okay, this is just quick information about me. Then uh, today I'm going to uh, present uh, HMS Core Toolkit for you. Um, HMS Core Toolkit is a lightweight IDE2 plugin which provided for the Huawei mobile services ecosystem. And HMS Core Toolkit uh, implements app creation, um, coding, conversion, 
debugging and testing and also release. It helps you integrate HMS Core APIs with lower costs and higher efficiency. First, I will show you how to install the plugin. Then I'm going to explain uh, some capabilities and I'm going to do uh, illustrate a conversion with you with a demo project. All right. Let's start with the installation. You can install the HMS Core Toolkit in either using Android Studio Marketplace or importing the local plugin package. To install from local disk, enter developer.huawei.com into your search bar, then click on Huawei Mobile Services, then click on Developer Tools, and you can find the HMS Core Toolkit here. Click on Download. and find the latest version okay after the login step uh, with your huawei id uh, you will be able to download the zip it file then okay i just skipped this part because i have already downloaded it before um, open android studio then click on plugins, click on install plugin from disk. Okay, here you can find your downloaded file. Mine is here. And after the click OK, uh, the HMS Core Toolkit will be ready. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I can cancel it now because I, I can show you the other way. To install, click on plugins again, click on marketplace and enter HMS Core Toolkit into the search bar and click on install. Then HMS Core Toolkit, Core Toolkit will be ready after the installation. Then you should restart Android Studio. After the installation completed, we are ready to use HMS Core Toolkit. So, I'm going to convert the existing Android app uh, into the application code integrated with Huawei Mobile Services. So, I have found a good example for it. Uh, this is this is a name of the application which is a timer and this code lab uh, from Google and uh, they used Firebase Cloud messaging into this application as you know that Firebase services uh, are strongly dependent on Google mobile services which are not available for Huawei devices I mean HMS only devices and we are going to make uh, this application available for HMS only devices after the conversion. So let's clone this application. Okay. Let me create a new folder. I will say HMS convert and just clone this. Okay, we have done with this and let's open this application. here and 
before the conversion we need to have completed configuration in app gallery connect and integrate the HMS core SDK and enable the required services which is pushkit in uh, in this app because uh, Firebase cloud messaging is not available for Huawei devices so you we cannot obtain the uh, push notifications from Firebase console so we going to uh, we are going to handle it in app gallery console so let's create an uh, project here and let's add an app into it okay, we need a uh, package name so let's check Here, it should be same as this app. So let's say push sample and app. Choose the language. Okay, it says that the package name is already exist. So let's put uh, HMS. Uh, example at the end of the name copy of it click on ok all right we are ready for this app gallery connect so we need to change the app uh, package name here also just refactor it because it should be same select all places and click on refactoring do refactor and that's it okay here we need to uh, check the APIs and push kit is already enabled as default so we don't need to change anything here and set the data lo storage location and it's okay and last step for uh, enabling push kit all right and okay we need also certificated fingerprint here Oh, and we need to generate it locally for app signature uh, to obtain the certificated fingerprint so let's do it together and click on new one key store pad it should be uh, in app directory so just simply choose the uh, App directory into this app and give the key store doesn't matter what you call and set them just say key for this alias and you can skip them click on release and check these bold boxes for signature uh, versions click on finish uh, okay we have errors but uh, I think it seems like for Google services so we are going to disable uh, them so it is not a big deal here we don't need to change anything the uh, needed file is already added here so just uh, generate the uh, certificated fingerprint together okay, open the common prompt and 
go to the directory where uh, the JDK is located. So let me find it. Okay, here. And we need to go to this directory. And we need to command key to list v and the key store and we need to key store directory we just created it into the app directory of the application so here this is we need this one and give the exact name of it which is key store and enter the password okay these certificated fingerprint are generated here so we need this one so copy this fingerprint and put it into here yeah that's it for app gallery connect and we need this eg connect services json file to configuration uh, just download it and also you you need to put it all, uh, into the app directory of the project uh, paste it here and that's it yeah we have these uh, needed files here okay just we need to complete uh, the configuration from here also um, and we need to add SDK for pushkit so okay I just uh, write it down uh, here to get them easily we need to implement this SDK and we need uh, configuration uh, the obfuscation configuration file to prevent uh, the HMS SDK from being obs obs uh, obfuscated so just copy of them you can find them in uh, official document in developer.huawei.com and let's go here and add them and the last step for adding signatures into the Gradle file just copy all of them and go through the app, uh, build Gradle file into the app module okay we need to add here you can delete this one and add the both scopes okay we need to give these right names here it was key and the password was like that I think we have we are down for the configuration part so we can just uh, illustrate the conversion okay we have four options here uh, this one creates a code conversion and this one uh, loads the latest conversion that is not completed and this one backs up the current project and conversion information this one for restores a project with the backup file so go go with new conversion okay let me describe these parameters uh, the project type uh, for type of the project to be converted so we have an application you can just uh, click on it and the analysis directory specifies the root directory of the project to be analyzed and you don't need to change these and 
the backup directory it should be set because it specifies whether to backup the project file before the conversion for so let's create it okay I'm gonna create a new folder for uh, named as backup click on OK and it should be in this uh, directory and for this selection uh, the comment mode after this option is selected comments to the original code will be saved into the project so I don't want to keep uh, that original code into here uh, because we need the converted one so let's just uh, click on next and wait for the analyzing okay this is the uh, result of the analyzing and before starting you just uh, take care of these uh, items check if Android X is needed so just click on it all right if uh, if the target uh, SDK uh, is 28 or later the Android Android X uh, is supported so we need to uh, add uh, these uh, two lines of code uh, if the Android is X is supported and this one for minimum SDK and the target SDK of Android uh, let me check what what we need here and um, okay mi minimum SDK uh, sh cannot be less than uh, 17 and the target target should be 28 so let's go back and check them and we have one more thing here and okay this this dependency sh uh, version should be uh, like this so let's do these steps and we can uh, execute the conversion analysis again just click on cancel and let's check these properties first and for android x is supported and they are enabled as true already so we don't need to change it anything here and um, let's go for gradle file okay we need to change this as like that uh, before the conversion and last one for the target should be 28 and minimum SDK version is okay it, it, it just cannot be uh, less than 17 so all right we can just uh, go the same steps again click on next all right uh, this is the result and we have two dependencies uh, with Google mobile services in the, I mean two API's and they include five methods and for both uh, conversion policies and the convertible Google mobile uh, service methods and four of them can be converted in automatically and one uh, is needed in manually and this is the most important part for before the analyzing and the conversion policy let me uh, describe what they are and these two 
for uh, about uh, coexist coexistence uh, Google Mobile Services and Huawei Mobile Services. You can just uh, choose them which one is uh, called first, and they they can. Uh, how can I say that? Um, you can keep both SDKs in one APK. Uh, you can manage it in just one APK. But I'm going to choose this one. Uh, we are going to uh, convert the Google Mobile Services APIs uh, to the Huawei Mobile Services API. So this conversion uh, that I'm going to illustrate it today. Let's click on Analyze. And this is the result. Okay. And we need to do these configuration steps here. Uh, these are the issues, and these are the descriptions to tell us how to so uh, how to solve the issue. So just click on it and follow the instructions. They say that we need to add compile options here. So just click on it and go through the official document and simply copy this code and put it into here. So we are done with this. And this one, compile SDK version. It is okay, we have already checked them and if the target is uh, 28 or later Android X will be support so okay we have already checked it and this one okay these uh, metadata files are inapplicable for Huawei mobile services so we just need to ignore them I just delete it Okay, these two are also here. I will delete them also. And click on OK for them. And we have two more. And we need to add this metadata for uh, Huawei mobile services. So just simply copy of this code and put here so this is okay and the last one okay we need the manual conversion here okay I'm going to convert uh, actually we change lots of things in Gradle files so I will just sign this uh, application Okay, we have error here because I didn't add uh, Maven repository into the uh, Gradle, but it is going to be uh, handled in automatic conversion. So let's go this here and click on all OK for conversion and click on convert. So you can see that the change here. Okay, we have we are done and let's check this. Go to the manual conversion document. Okay, this one uh this class calls the get instance method so it was firebase messaging class so it was just converted we need to add this uh, for uh, this conversion policy just go back okay they are already changed we just need to add get application con context but 
Okay, it should be just context for Kotlin. And it calls the subscription uh, method. So we are going to, we are going to subscribe a topic here when we call this uh, method. So let's look at where where it's called. Okay, it is in on create view. So when we okay when it started, we we are going to uh, subscribe. I think it's okay also. Just try to boil. Okay, the building is finished and we don't have any error. Uh, let's try how it's work. So okay, let's let's try it on uh, with cloud debugging. So we are going to uh, connect remotely in real devices with uh, cloud debugging. All right. Um, I think we need to sign in to App Gallery uh, with HMS Core Toolkit. Okay, click on Allow. If you have not signed it in to App Gallery Connect, uh, the toolkit automatically opens uh, the browser and prompts you to sign in and perform the authorization, as you can see here. And go back here. Okay. Let's select a remote device. Uh, okay, I'm going to run with P40. Okay, the, they are not uh, virtual devices, they are just real devices and located in our uh, R&D centers, so and the usage is totally free. So you can easily uh, check your applications if, if you are, uh, have not uh, HMS on the devices. It's just installed. So let me check if we subscribed. Yeah, we subscribed the topic here and we can check uh, from app gallery. Okay, in here, click on push kit. <coughs> Sorry about it. And click on add notification and let me just push uh, test, let's say, and the header array. HMS toolkit. And do hello from EG connect. Um, the action opening app on page okay we need to change. yes subscriber okay uh, let's say submit and waiting for the push notification to click on okay okay this operation is successfully done Okay. Uh, yeah, it is here. As you can see, this is the Egg Timer app notification and HMS toolkit is and hello from AG Connect. And when we click on it, the, we are just, we are going to open the uh, application. So we have done with the conversion. So we successfully migrate from uh, Firebase Cloud Messaging uh, to Huawei Pushkit. So thank you for watching and
have a nice day. Thank you so much for your insightful presentation. Let me kindly remind you guys that if you have any questions or queries, you can please leave them in the comment section below or drop us a note at epsapu at huawei.com. And we can move on to our last part of today's workshop, which is going to be HMS4K integration of the Unity plugin. Our speaker shall give us the overview of the Unity plugin and also show us a demo project for the game they created themselves. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Huawei webinar. I am Kayan Başkeser. I work at uh, Huawei as a developer technical support engineer. And we have prepared this presentation with my colleague Yusuf Altun. In this webinar, I will talk about Unity H HMS plugin and then uh, I will create a demo game uh, with uh, HMS kits. In this presentation, we have four topics. Generally, uh, I will talk about U Unity HMS plugin features and then I will make a demo. For now, uh, Unity plugin, uh, this plugin supports only five kits. Uh, these are account kits, uh, in-app purchases, ads kit, push kit, and game kit. Uh, on the following days, uh, many kits will be added uh, to this plugin. As you can see, we have a diagram. Actually, it explains uh, integration uh, process step by step. Let's start with step one. Uh, we need to create an account. account uh, on developer.huawei.com and we need to do some configuration uh, step two uh, we should create a project it is a unity project uh, you can uh, step three uh, we can use this link uh, to download this uh, hms plugin and step four importing uh, unity plugin into our project and step five we need to create a key store and then uh, step uh, six we will generate fingerprint uh, fingerprint uh, from this key store uh, we should add this fingerprint uh, into app gallery connect uh, step seven and step eight uh, these are same actually uh, uh, we should enable kits for example if you want to use account kit uh, you must enable it also it is uh, also it is uh, in a purchases and step uh, 9 and 10 uh, we need to update app gallery connect file uh, using the app gallery connect file which is uh, in uh, huawei console and the last one step 11 we need to update android manifest file in our plugin and also at the uh, end of the presentation i will show uh, all steps in demo parts uh, we create a demo game for this webinar and i will integrate some kits uh, into that demo demo game uh, for example, account kit and ads kit. With account kit, uh, we will do a login and logout uh, process uh, using Huawei ID. And uh, with Huawei ads kit, we will show advertising uh, videos to users. Uh, now, uh, demo part. Let's start demo. Uh, first, we are going to developer.huawei.com and here uh, we need a huawei account i already have one and i log in uh, if you don't have an account you have to register first from here now we should access uh, console uh, by clicking here and then click app gallery connect click my projects here we add a new project we need a uh, project name let's type uh, 
sample unity demo and then click OK button here uh, we add an uh, application into our project and here we are typing app name and uh, package name our app name uh, sample unity demo and our package name sample unity demo dot Huawei and if you want to use in a purchase uh, package name must end with dot uh, Huawei like this uh, for app category uh, select game and default language English and then click button OK For now, we can skip these steps. Uh, these are for Android uh, projects. To make sure our keys are enabled, uh, let's go to uh, Manage APIs. For example, we will use uh, Account Kit in our project and uh, it's enabled. So uh, now uh, go back to general information. Download this AG Connect Services JSON file and we will use it uh, on uh, HMS Unity plugin. Now we should download uh, HMS plugin. Uh, with this repository, uh, you can download uh, HMS plugin and uh, there is a readme md file. Uh, there are some information about plugin. Later you can look at it. Let's download. Now we should go to Unity. Uh, like I said, uh, we created a demo game. Uh, this demo game has uh, two scenes. First one is uh, main scene. This one is main scene. And second one is a uh, game scene. Place uh, extra three buttons. First one is for interstitials. Add and other two buttons for uh, login and logout processes. And in game scenes, uh, there is a shark. Uh, mission of shark is eating uh, swimming objects, uh, but not all of them, because uh, there are also uh, enemies among the objects. Uh, you can see the object. Uh, uh, two of them are the enemies. The others are uh, our mission. If the shark eats the enemies, player will will die. When player uh, is dead, uh, we will offer an option to continue game uh, with rewarded ads it's a really basic game let's check the game Okay then, let's import plugin. For this process, uh, click Assets menu, Import Package and Custom Package. And here uh, we need to select our uh, HMS plugin. We should select all of them in this window. And then we need to replace the uh, AG Connect Service JSON uh, with downloaded uh, uh, AG Connect Service file uh, and this file in uh, Huawei folder. Okay, I'm deleting this.
now we need to modify uh, Android manifest file uh, for this action uh, there are two ways the first one is with uh, Huawei tab and uh, when we click Huawei tab uh, we should uh, type three uh, parameter uh, app ID CP ID and package name and uh, the second way is manually modifying the file I will do it uh, manually and this file is in uh, plugin folder and in Android okay we will update only three parameters app ID CP ID and package name and you can find this information from AG connect JSON file also I am opening okay CP ID and app id and the last one package name and control s after this we need to update a uh, minimum sdk for android and update default package manager package name sorry For this process, we need to uh, build setting and clear settings in this window. We should write here. And uh, minimum API level uh, must be uh, 21. Okay, and the last part of integration is creating a key store now we can create a key store for uh, app gallery connect okay open up the okay, open up the uh, build settings and publishing settings After that, uh, let's create a fingerprint uh, using this key store. For this one, we need to open a command line. And we can use uh, this command. I need to put a key store uh, password and this one. We will use it let's copy it and uh, we need to put it into uh, app gallery connect yeah. that's all integration part is finished in plugin folder uh, sorry wait a minute In plugin folder uh, there are some files related uh, Android part and also uh, Huawei folder we have demo scenes right here and also there are prefabs uh, for easy development and some plugin scripts and a DLL file uh, we will use only these prefabs and our uh, uh, we will create our scripts for uh, demo development for example at skit uh, for example at skit uh, let's check the demo at scene and try this uh, scene uh, Huawei phone for example this one let's uh, build and run
let's check uh, details of add demo scene for now this plugin supports only two types ads uh, the first one is interstitial ads and the second one is rewarded ads here uh, in demo uh, uses ad manager it's a prefabs actually uh, from here and uh, this ad manager contains two scripts like you see uh, revert ad manager and interstitial uh, ad manager uh, we use them to reach uh, ad method uh, you can you can add them manually or use these uh, prefabs uh, let's check demo ad manager secret In demo script, uh, we need to, like you see, we need to uh, define test ID for these uh, two ads, like this. Also, we have to uh, object. Uh, we have also we have object uh, for two types, the first one and second one. And in the uh, start method. We initialize them uh, with some configurations like this. Uh, for example, we give test ID into the uh, add object right here, and then we can we can follow add's process uh, with following uh, methods. Uh, for example, when user uh, closes the uh, interstitial add. You can realize this action with this method. Uh, after that, also uh, there are some more method methods uh, in main script. You can call them in our script. Uh, let's check main script. We can call them uh, in our script. Let's integrate our demo. Uh, actually, uh, I don't create a, a new script for our for us. Uh, I will modify uh, this one. Uh, wait a minute. Okay. Uh, when user clicks uh, this button, interstitial ads should appear. And uh, on game screen, uh, when user dies in game, uh, reward ads uh, should appear continuous uh, appear to continue game. Now I am adding the now I am adding the interstitial ads uh, for uh, this button like that. When user click it, uh, interstitial uh, ads will appear right, in this, in this uh, scene. Also, we need to add uh, add manager prefabs. Otherwise, our code doesn't work. And then game scene. Now I am adding a rewarded ad into right here.
and also I need to add uh, add manager prefabs to uh, reach ads method okay integration is finished uh, let's build and uh, run again to check status of uh, our project Okay, we checked uh, our project uh, ads kit and uh, it looks good. Uh, our integration is working well. After this process, uh, you should uh, follow the user actions uh, with ads uh, methods that I mentioned earlier. Uh, if user watch uh, full rewarded video, they can continue game. Uh, you should write uh, your code accordingly. Uh, let's start integrating Huawei account. Uh, firstly, uh, check the account kit demo. Okay, uh, actually all kits uh, have structure. Also, this demo use uh, account manager for calling uh, plugin scripts. Uh, in this scripts uh, we will use two methods uh, these are login and logout let's check the account hit demo script Okay, uh, we add these two methods uh, into login and logout uh, buttons on uh, main screen. Also, we will show the uh, status of login uh, via text component. We will uh, take a text component like this and then uh, with uh, these uh, methods, uh, we can uh, change it uh, easily. Okay, uh, let's add let's add the actions uh, into buttons. First one, we need to open uh, main scene. Okay, for this button, we need to add action. When you click it, uh, user uh, must be login, and then we will say we will add same script. Logout script, and also we need to uh, add prefabs account manage manager. Okay, uh, for now. Uh, it's still clear. Uh, let's try account kit. So uh, we tried only two HMS uh, kits in demo part. Uh, also, you can use in app purchases, uh, game and push kits, and you can find uh, so many information about HMS kits at uh, developer.huawei.com uh, with this menu. 
I hope you enjoyed my presentation and I hope it was uh, useful for you. Take care. Thank you so much to all the speakers in the today's sessions. I hope you guys will enjoy it. We are really looking forward to receiving your entries. Please give us a note if you like, if you liked it, or if you have any questions. And don't forget to join the contest. Thank you so much for your time. See you soon. Goodbye.